these two dot points are, I guess I'm doing together. So it's the transformation of the Delian League and the nature of Athenian imperialism in relationship with allies. Um, so, terms and concepts. So, to wrap this slide up, um, it, essentially, so the Delian League wins, the Delian League achieves the three aims that it uh, originally set out to achieve. Xerxes signs a peace agreement, which um, he's not allowed to have uh, an, any form of army uh, within a day's march of Greece. Um, so the question comes down to if, if the Delian League has achieved its aims, it doesn't really need to exist anymore, does it? Um, obviously, what you know and what we're about to learn is that is absolutely not the case. We see a continuation here. And uh, the line of where it stops being the Delian League and starts being about Athenian and um, their empire, um, that's, I guess, what this dot point is essentially looking at. Now, one of the important, um, one of the important uh, events that happen is the revolt of Thassos. And Thassos is a member of the League uh, who essentially gets pissed off at Athens for interfering with, you know, their, their gold mining. And then, and, and they try and um, remove themselves from the League, which Athens is not going to just allow to happen. And they end up leading a battle um, against Thassos, which they win. And then they besiege uh, Thassos for around three years. And the battle part was led by Chimon. The Thassos loses, um, and they've got some penalties as a result of this loss. But this sent a message to um, essentially other the other league members of the consequences for um, if they wanted to leave. Um, it's also worth noting Sparta or uh, Thasians asked Sparta for help, who agreed, but they couldn't end up sending people because um, there was an earthquake. Uh, and their slave population rose up um, to try and, you know, reclaim their freedom. Look, the Egyptian campaign is worth noting as well, um, because the Athenians essentially lose, but it, it also then becomes an excuse for uh, Athens to move the treasury, so all of the wealth and gold from Delos to Athens. So now they're in control of the money and wealth. Now, there's ongoing political change. Um, essentially speaking, Kaimon is a conservative. Uh, he doesn't want change, and he wants to keep the power with the aristocratic, which is like the rich and the noble people. Um, he, like a lot of, lot of times, the understanding is society runs much better if you don't have everyone um, trying to bring change and everyone having their input and blah, 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 blah. Kaimon is also very pro-Sparta in trying to have peaceful relations with Athens and Sparta, okay? Um, but we start to see political change against him, more radical and democratic. So you've got your Ephialtes um, and Pericles, uh, who they want to move closer to democracy. They've got a little bit more of an aggressive um, stance on their relationship with other cities, and they are less keen on Sparta. Um, and eventually, Ephialtes is assassinated, which essentially leaves Pericles as the head of the Radical Democrats. So, over time, okay, pretty much, it starts pretty closely, damn Themistocles again, it starts pretty close after the, um, the battle. Um, Themistocles essentially is trying to rebuild a wall, uh, or trying to build a wall that would protect the city to the naval kind of section, the navy base. Sparta doesn't want him to do this. Um, Themistocles finds a way to lie and get what he wants as per usual. Um, there's some other stuff there in terms of Themistocles trying to make sure Sparta doesn't get too many, um, uh, too much power with too many allies. Uh, and so Sparta and Athens start to become concerned at each other's power. Okay, so Sparta obviously supports Chimon in Athens, and then when chimon has gone, um, that obviously uh, is a bit of a concern for them as well. Athens starts to befriend Sparta's allies and all that kind of stuff as well. 
Um, okay, so Athenian imperialism. So, uh, you know, within 25 years, um, we pretty much see a dominated Athenian empire. Um, and, and Athens starts to really try and solidify their resources and their strategic points and locations. Um, and they've got a number of ways of going about doing this. Um, Athens definitely didn't... Athens was concerned that they may end up fighting against Persia and Sparta. Now, not necessarily that they would become allies with one another, but they would essentially be fighting two enemies at the same time, which was not ideal. So they were really concerned with how rich they were and how, um, how much security they had. All right, so they've got plenty of methods to control their allies. Um, uh, things like the government types. Essentially, when they crushed a government of anyone that tried to rebel against them, they replaced it with a democratic government. Um, they used clerics, which is clerics, which is essentially for um, taking some of your citizens and essentially kicking the locals out of a bit of land and then putting your locals on their land. So they could essentially act as almost watchdogs for you. Um, they can, you know, grow food or make more wealth for you. Um, and it's, yeah, it's just kind of like a, a little, like a population of people of yours that you trust in somewhere you may not trust. Um, so you've got the oaths, which we've already spoken about, but they essentially, when they get new territory, um, they swear not to disrupt the league or prevent others from doing so, which is essentially loyalty to Athens. Um, they've got military garrisons, which essentially means leaving some um, soldiers uh, within particular cities. Um, um, you've got also the, the navy, which was obviously incredibly strong and scary, um, which the, their navy is massive. Okay, all the other league members' fleets combined was around the same or less than the Athenian fleet. So they're really a force to be reckoned with um, at sea, not to mention they've proven their worth at the Battle of Salamis as well. And look, uh, Athens gets involved in legal disputes. Um, if it doesn't involve Athens, they wouldn't get involved. But if it does involve an Athenian person, they would step in. Um, was justice fair for every single city? No. Um, it's, I guess, how loyal you are to Athens. Are you pro-democratic or are you pro-aristocratic may help. Um, so no, it wasn't necessarily a fair handing out of justice. Uh, and it's essentially just another way that Athens is telling its allies what to do. And the coinage decree, once again, rather than creating a combined Delian League currency, um, Athens just essentially tells um, those under its control, you're using this form of coinage now. So that is a super quick kind of way to go over these two dot points. Um, hopefully these notes help and uh, we'll cover more in depth in class.